next destination was found on the back roads of the Valpolicella. When you leave Villa San Michele and ascend to the peaks of the Fumane Valley, a trove of treasures are waiting. First, we had to pass through the center of the commune of Fumane and then work our way up in elevation. We were on our way to a mountain peak called Monte Solane, or the Sunny Mountain. When we arrived, I noticed we were alone with the vineyards. There wasn't a person, or a house, or a store anywhere in sight. The higher we went, the more rugged the terrain got. We arrived at Monte Solane. This is the single vineyard crew that gives birth to the Ugolini Ripasso della Vapolicella. On the northern border of the Vapolicella rises Monte Solane. It's a scenic ridge dazzled by Lake Garda that breathes the breath of the Dolomites. At an altitude of 2,130 feet, majestically watched over by falcons, the vines grow on a deep slab of prune stone and their roots are forced to dig deep among veins of fossil clay to gather life. Thus, they come to offer a low yield of 60 quintals per hectare for the finest quality. Prune stone is also known locally as Lessinia stone, referring to the nearby Lessini mountains. The stone was created in the Jurassic period 145 million years ago. These rock formations were formed by vast numbers of shellfish dying and sinking to the sea floor. Once they hit the sea floor, they fossilized and turned into rock or prune stone. So the foundation of one of the world's most important wine regions was formed on the bed of prehistoric rock and the history of the earth is buried under this vineyard. It's as if the vineyard forms the ceiling of the earth's museum. The prune stone was used for making tools and building structures in prehistoric times. And the Romans used it to build many structures and pavements in Verona. While it's technically not marble, that's exactly what it looks like. Today, it's a secret ingredient in the fine wines of this region, and it can't be duplicated anywhere in the world. Monte Solane is embedded with prune stone. At one time, millions of years ago, there was a tectonic shift underground that forced the creation of mountains. Today, it's a unique terrain that produces a unique wine, a sea above the sea. The vine roots work hard to crawl deeper into the earth and breaking these prune stones, extracting a treasure of minerality for the wine. Due to its location to Lake Garda, Monte Solana enjoys fresh air in the morning that sparks vegetative growth and life in the vineyard. While the cold winds of the Alps protect the vineyard from parasites at nighttime, keeping it healthy and ecologically in balance. Only the finest Corvina grapes are hand harvested and selected for this Ripasso crew. The grapes are pressed the same day of harvest to capture their freshness and fermented in steel vats for about six months while they wait for the Amarone Pomis. After the Amarone is made, the Ripasso in the steel vats go through a secondary fermentation on the Amarone Pomis. This increases the intensity and richness of the aromatics and flavors and adds more structure. This second pass over the Amarone Pomis is called the Repass or Ripasso. The wine then ages in French Barrique for about 20 months, followed by at least three more years in the bottle in the estate cellar until releasing to the public. The total process is at least five years. This is not only a high elevation single vineyard crew of Ripasso della Vapolicella, but it's also a monovarietal wine of Corvina that passes through an Amarone Pomis. The wine has a dark and brilliant ruby red color with an intense aroma reminiscent of ripe red fruits, white pepper, 
tobacco leaf and cocoa with a pleasant note of balsamic reduction and just a hint of Mediterranean herbs. A warm and well-balanced palette with a clean and dry finish. Just 19,000 bottles handcrafted annually depending on the vintage and aging potential of 15 to 20 years. Amarone della Vapolicella is considered one of the world's greatest wines. Part of its secret recipe is a process called appassimento. Appassimento is the process of air drying the grapes before fermentation. Its full velvety body with a long list of complex flavor notes and aromatics and its ability to age for decades has become a coveted wine among collectors. It's common speak in the wine world that Amarone is a relatively newer wine that now has a place in the arena of grand wines like Bordeaux, Burgundy, Barolo, and Barbaresco. Some say because the wine was anointed with the DOCG classification, the highest of the Italian wine disciplines in 2010. Others say Amarone was created by accident in 1936. Considering the long and rich wine history of the Valpolicella, it seemed like a contradiction that Amarone was a relatively new wine compared to the other titans of wine. And in fact, there are other contradictions surrounding this wine. For example, what does Amarone mean? Amarone comes from the Italian root word amaro, or bitter. When you add the three-letter suffix O-N-E, at the end of a word in the Italian language, it makes the object bigger. For example, libro, or book in Italian, is converted to librone, with the suffix meaning big book. Or porta, for door in Italian, is converted to portone, or big door, with the suffix. So logically, one would think that amarone means the big, bitter wine. But if you've ever tasted an amarone before, the last word anyone would use to describe this wine would be bitter. It's anything but bitter. The first mention of Amarone actually dates back again to the poet Catullus, around 55 BC, born in Verona and who wrote about a wine in Latin as Calices Amariores, or bitter wine glasses. Fast forward to 493 AD in a letter from Cassiodorus, the minister of the king of the Visconths, requested wine made from dried grapes from the Valpolicella for a wedding. In the 1700s, Francesco Scipone Maffei, a writer from Verona, writes about an amaro of a particular grace in the Valpolicella. The story goes that it was in 1936 when a cellar manager named Adelino Lucchese finds a long forgotten barrel of ricciotto that continued to ferment until it became Amarone. In fact, when he found this wine, he apparently said, this is not Amaro, it's an Amarone. He didn't mean that the wine was literally bitter, according to our meaning of the word. He meant that it was a bitter ricciotto because it was dry and not sweet like a ricciotto should be. So Signor Lucchese gets credit for coining the term Amarone in the early 20th century. What's a little misleading is when the wine intelligentsia claimed 1936 was the birth year of Amarone due to an accident. This is another contradiction. It's hard to believe that 1936 was the first time a winemaking accident happened in the Valpolicella. Sweet wines were much more appreciated in ancient Rome until really the 20th century when dry wines became more desirable. And I think what they call an accidental discovery is really a moment of stylistic change in the wine world which we are moving away from sweet wines and moving towards dry wines. Dry wines would have been considered bitter 
in ancient times. And so Amarone means the big dry wine.